A Power of Respect, Positive Parenting Secret. Ask. Asking is a way to be respectful. It's one of the ways of speaking respectfully. Pay attention to how you speak to your grandkids or your kids. Are you being respectful? When you think about your kids or your grandkids, do you think respectful thoughts? If you discover thoughts that are not respectful, you can change those thoughts. You can change what you say to your grandkids or your kids and how you speak to them. This alone can bring the positive changes that you want. Combine this with other secrets and magnify its power, making problems vanish even more quickly. The following question came from a grandmother who wanted to know how to deal respectfully with her grandkids in a situation that challenged her. The answer is an example of how asking and sharing can work in your life. My grandchildren often spend time at my house. I have some beliefs about nutrition which are different from their wishes. For example, sometimes they just want to eat macaroni and cheese for dinner, and I think they should eat a more balanced meal than that. At this point, I've decided to let them have their own way, but I don't feel completely comfortable with this. Do you have any suggestions about how we can all get our needs met? I think that your question gets to the heart of the matter, everyone getting their needs met. Have you discussed this with them? If you have not, sometime when they are not hungry and there is no stress between you, tell them that you would like their help. Explain to them as briefly and clearly as possible your position on nutrition and your concerns for what they eat. This talk alone could result in a change in their eating habits. New information can change your whole life. Ask them to help you make a list of foods that they do like and that you also feel good about. Let them know that you want to have food for them that they like and that you are happy to have them eat. If that moment is not such a good time for this whole process, arrange to continue another time. You might write a list of foods that you would like them to eat, then interview them, noting next to each food who likes, who does not like, and who has not tried it yet. If time, energy, and interest allow, go to the store with them and get some of the foods that they do like and maybe some they haven't tried yet. With a younger child, like two or three years old, it's better to skip the talk and go straight to the store. Let them shop for foods that you both agree to. For those who are interested, and most children are, male and female, whatever their age, ask and encourage them to help you prepare these agreed-upon foods. Children who love food preparation will probably want to do most, if not all, of the work themselves. Even children who do not completely love making food usually enjoy eating the food they have made or helped make. Once you have the list of foods that you know they like and you feel good about, you can try something I learned from my mother. I have seen it work many times. When people are hungry, they want to eat something fast. 
They often eat whatever is put in front of them, especially if it's something they like. They might even try some new things. If you make it a habit to have those agreed-upon foods already prepared and just put them out for snacks or appetizers or at the beginning of a meal, they often get eaten without question and with pleasure. Then everyone gets their needs met.